Thank you, Celeste, and a good, timely insight into some of the revisions being looked at in terms of the SBHE programme, but also some of the target-focused uh, programmes that are going on. Now, next, I'm going to ask Dr. Michael Bourne from UCC, uh, who's uh, involved in some research with a range of researchers in the whole issue of prevention, including Professor John Hivers, who spoke to us previously, uh, Dr. Michael Bourne's from UCC. So you're very welcome, Michael. Thank, thank you, Chair, and I'm really delighted to have this opportunity to perhaps challenge the cerebral cortex that is collective in the room on the issue of drug use. Um, and I'm bringing it from a third level perspective. Um, and uh, I think it's really important that we reflect on the things we focus on according to what our backgrounds are and what our jobs are. Um, what I'm going to share is the data from a very comprehensive survey called the Drug Use in Higher Education in Ireland Survey. Um, which is a, a rather heavy tome, and for reasons of the rainforest, there's not one for everyone in the audience, but you can download it from the internet at dewey.ie. But in terms of uh, the importance of getting the data, the overall aim of the Dewey project was to get better data to better inform policy. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity that you might have some better data so that you might be better informed to inform policy. So, in essence, what you see and what I see may depend on, on our own perspective. And uh, that, that might be that you will focus on the things that are re really clear to you and are on the surface when you actually really miss that which is lurking beneath. And how big an issue is for you may depend on how close it is to you. Uh, we know to, from these two that something being small may simply be that it's quite far away from your daily responsibilities. Equally, uh, if you see it as being far away, you won't realize how big it might be. So I thought if I shared with you the data, well, then we'd be starting from a common, uncontestable starting point. But of course, we know even data can be interpreted differently according to your perspective. So I want you to be challenged to consider from your own perspective whether the data confirms your biases or challenges them. I want to acknowledge the members of the research team, very fortunate in UCC to be supported by our presidents and our deputy president and uh, students union. Um, and this was a multidisciplinary team uh, joined by Professor Joanna Ivers, who is well known to you and in, uh, assisted by Professor Keenan and Professor Cannon. Um, it arose from recommendations in a framework which does exist from the Department of Education issued in 2020, and we all know what happened in March 2020. This was February 2020, uh, and the framework recommended that robust data be collected, and the Dewey survey was born. Um, there are seven areas we want to collect data in, and I'll only report briefly on three. The other four merit considerations, so I would strongly encourage you to have a look at them in your time. So I will look at the prevalence, we will look at the harms, and we will look at briefly the motivations for drug use. The first thing to say, this is actually the most comprehensive data set on drug use, in, not only in uh, higher education, but in, in young people in Europe in the past 20 years. There's over 11,500 responses, and I'm not really a scientist, but I'm reassured that's actually a really, really um, comprehensive data set. 21 of our 23 HEIs participated, which is really uh, to their credit. 60% were female, slight over-representation. Uh, four out of five were undergraduates. The median age was 21. Slightly over-representation of those who are registered with our disability support services, and 90% uh, were EU students. The response rate was 29%, which for an online survey is actually a really respectable response rate. So I think this could be considered to be really reliable and robust data. Of course, that depends on your perspective, and of course, I altered the data, so I would be biased, wouldn't I? So just with regard to the overall findings, so... Um, 43.2% of those who completed the survey had never used drugs. One in five, 19% had used drugs more than once, had used it perhaps once in their lifetime, but not in the past 12 months. One in five had used drugs in the preceding month, and 16% had used it in the preceding year, but not in the preceding month. If we look by gender, males were more likely to be drug users across all categories. So in terms of about one in six females and one in four males had used drugs in the month preceding the survey. They were current drug users. There was a 
higher rate of current drug use about those who identified as non-binary, and that confirms other data from other surveys. In terms of by year of study, drug use increases from year of entry through first year, second year, to peak in third and fourth year. And that's actually contrary to other data, which suggests that drug use falls off in third and fourth year. So one in six first year students, one in five second year students, and one in four third and fourth year students were current users of drugs. And that's perhaps a bit surprising for those of you who haven't seen this data and don't work in third level. In terms of the drugs being used, I use a mnemonic CCEK. So it's cannabis, cocaine, ecstasy, and ketamine in that order. And interestingly, this order of prevalence or, or, or preference of drug use was across all three categories of drug users. Uh, and over 50% of those who used drugs had used cannabis. The interesting thing there is about one in four had used cocaine, and cocaine has displaced ecstasy from being the second most prevalent drug being used by our students. Of course, after alcohol, which is the main drug of choice for all Irish society. Just to contrast with the data from half a generation ago, 20 years ago, a comprehensive study was done called the CLAN survey, and I think the most important change here is cocaine past 12 month use. That means they'd used cocaine at least once in 12 months. It was 5.8% in 2002. In 2021, nearly 20 years later, that had nearly trebled to 15.7%. That means one in seven students had used cocaine at least once in the preceding month, preceding year. Actually, one in 10 students had used cocaine in the preceding month. Just to focus the rest of the presentation on the group which we considered at the highest risk, which are what are described as the current users. That is, they had used drugs in the preceding month. And this uh, category of drug users are those who suffer most harm. So one of the most interesting findings was when do our, those people who end up using drugs regularly start taking drugs? Well, the commonest age of first use is actually when they come to university, 19 to 21. But you will see if you end up as a current drug user, for a significant number of people, they start their drugs at the age of 16 to 18 or under 16. So you'll see there one in three 16 to 18 year olds uh, had started cocaine and ended up as current uh, drug users. One in four current drug users had started cannabis before they were 16. Just two minutes, Michael. Just so this next slide might be one of the most challenging. What's the main reasons for use? So we gave our students six uh, options. And the commonest reason for use for it is because they enjoy it. And that's actually not necessarily a palatable thing. Because most of us believe that if we work in healthcare, it comes from trauma or disadvantage or to relieve distress. And absolutely it does. Interestingly, for cannabis, it's the one substance for those who ended up as current drug users that they use it not just for fun, not for fun, but to relax. So they're self-medicating. It's not a zero-sum game, and over half of current drug users are at moderate or substantial risk of harm. Half of current drug users are at moderate or substantial risk of harm. And if we ask the students, is it having a positive or a negative impact on your life, if we eliminate the zero position, the null position, the teal color there, for Almost all categories, the students who use drugs monthly say it has a negative impact on their life, except interestingly socializing and actually mental health, which is a paradox in that they appear to be self-treating on occasions. Just one minute, Michael, please. Our students tell us overall it's having a negative impact on student life. Only 7.1% of the students believe it has a positive impact. 53% of our students tell us it's a negative impact on student life. And as to their desire to change, well, our current drug users, two out of three current drug users do not wish to change the drug habits. They don't consider it to be a problem. They consider they, they don't use it too often. Cannabis isn't harmful, and it's fun. 
So over one in two students have ever used a drug. One in three have used it in the past year. One in five using drugs in the past month. One in two feel drugs are part, a normal part of student life. Over one in two feel drugs has a negative impact on life. Less than one in ten says it has a positive impact. And one in two current drug users who are students are at substantial or serious risk of harm. Finish up, Michael, please. So, Gurumila Mahagav Galer. Thank, Thank you, you very much.